Well hello again everyone. The first job I've done this morning is even up the panel gap on that bonnet. It's uh, not perfect I suppose but it's definitely a lot better than it was. But anyway, the main thing today is to get on with this shower room and Nikki has made a suggestion, which I thought was very good, is we take the door off while we're working there, which will make things a little bit easier. So let's tackle that first. thing I think will be to pull those pipes back into the under seat compartment there where the water heater is just so they're out of the way and I'm not tripping over them while I'm working in there. Well that's much better with those pipes out of the way. Now it'd also be nice to get these wires out of the way because we need to do that as part of the permanent job anyway. I think this is the wire that comes from the water heater. These, I'm not entirely sure what these are. Well maybe they are to do with the water heater. I don't know to be honest. I'm going to take the front off the water heater panel and see what it looks like in there. Now this water heater panel already is a little bit delicate. I've had to uh, secure it with some tape, so maybe at some point it'd be good to try and get a, a replacement. Mm. Well, there we go. That top plug is the plug that goes to the water heater so that's the control and the power off to the water heater and that bottom two cables that goes into that little terminal block that's the power I think from the van to this little control panel that would be nice to get those wires running in the wall and there is a bit of a gap in the wall as you can see if I can get the wires to run up that void then uh, there'll be no need to house them in anything in that shower area. Let's see if we can disconnect them. I reckon this should just slide off. It does. Excellent. Oh, I've got some spare fuses there. Look, that's a handy thing. Didn't know that. No, I don't know quite how this plastic panel is secured. Try undoing these two screws. Yep, that's done it. Spare fuses out. Not lose them. Now remember everyone, the red wire goes on the top. Now I'm not going to stand much of a chance of pulling the wires up through that hole, but I want to check first. Yeah, so there's a batten there running along this way. So I may not be able to pull those wires up 
through there anyway. Uh, that's a shame. Yeah, there's also another batten up there. So there's at least two battens in the way before we get to our holes to go through there. It is, however, quite handy to know where that batten is for the uh, basin fixing later on. Looks like these screw holes have actually just missed it, which might explain why the basin wasn't very secure. If you stick that up there, my thumb on it. Yeah, so the bottom of the batten is there-ish. So I'm going to make a note of that for later on when I come to refix whatever basin I put in. So the underside of that batten is exactly 820 mil above the top surface of the shower tray. So you need to remember that, Mr. Ginge. Right, now I need to get all that old sealant out. Well, I've decided I'm going to take these trims off because I'm not satisfied that I can get this seal out easily enough without taking everything out. So I'm going to take these trims off and have a look and see what's behind there. Now there's a little corner bracket under there that's screwed from underneath. So I can't get this bit completely off, so I think what I'm going to have to do is go in through the cassette hatch and unscrew the screws that fix the toilet back. And I think they are just sort of these screws here. And uh, there's one a little bit further in. Undo them and see if anything comes a bit looser. There's also some screws in the bottom of these uh, holes there. They're going to be uh, interesting to get to, aren't they? Now, I think we should be able to lift the whole bog out now. All right, there's a little plate that it sits on. So we can leave all that in place. That's good. Right, let's move the bog. Right, now that's out. I can get to that last screw and remove that piece of trim there. I'm not going to remove that plywood boxing because that can stay in position. That's exactly where it needs to be. And I can just run the my white cladding down below the line of the bog and then seal it in much better. I'm sure there's at least 1.5mm clearance all round to do that. Well that's done, but I'm going to have some lunch now before I get on with anything else. Well, that was a very nice lunch, but uh, Mr. Ginge says it's time to get back to work. So what's next, boy? Well, I think the next thing is to get rid of all these traces and remains of the old sealant. Well, I have to say, it's uh, lovely hot weather for doing this. Uh, even Mr. Ginge is uh, enjoying the sunbathing. Next, though, I'm going to lower this frame of the vent because I think the first thing that I'm going to clad is the ceiling. I've been debating whether to try and strip the paper off here, but it's actually very, very well 
stuck on. There's a small little bit that's peeling off in the corner there. Uh, but other than that, it's absolutely rock solid. So I think that should be okay to fix direct to that. The walls we can certainly fix direct to because I think that's a pre-decorated uh, board that that's been made out of. Anyway, I think we should be able to lower this because this is on like a sleeve. Um, and then we can cut that lining round it and uh, put it back with a nice overlap. I did manage to find a nice LED light for the ceiling uh, the other day so I'm going to take this old incandescent light down as well. This is the remaining incandescent or fluorescent I suppose it isn't it fluorescent tube light that was left in the van after we changed the ones in the main area. It's all right actually but uh, might as well continue the LED upgrade, I guess. Uh, do not remove! Ugh. Right, so remember everyone, the red lead went to where the green wires go and the black lead goes to where the brown and cream whitey sort of thingy. I've got this weird thing. I thought it was a screw that just had some silicon put over it, but it looks like it's uh, I don't really know what it is, but there's certainly no screw head in the top of it. I have to try and cut it off, I think, with a hacksaw blade. I'll try and trim some of this gunk from around it first. Whatever it is, it's pretty solidly in there and uh, Although it turns, it doesn't want to come out. Let's see if I can cut it off. It's like it's a rivet or something. Right, that's got rid of it anyway. Where did it go? I think it's uh, steel, but... Uh... So as I might have said before, I've got to keep these in pretty much because they're on a big tongue that goes right underneath the wall. But I think I can... Uh, definitely hide these. These will have to come out. These are just plastic plugs which are in the wall which cover up a screw. Now you get a screwdriver in. That's just how the wall's fixed into the rest of the structure of the van. Now we can clad straight over those holes but obviously leaving the plugs in will cause a bit of a problem. So I'm just going to take all those last remaining ones out. Also got these rubbery fixings. Well, I don't know about rubbery, they're quite nice. But uh, anyway, they need to come out because they'll also interfere with our board. This is where the shower rail went in. Now I've also on this uh, outside wall here got this little hit and miss ventilator. And I think I should be able to just pop the cover off that and uh, unscrew that from the inside. Let's have a look. I have to be pretty careful with all this 30 year old plastic because it can be quite brittle after all that time. Ooh, some muck in there. Well, I reckon that's probably about as far as we'll get today because we've got a barbecue this afternoon. And it's about time to start packing away and getting ready for that. 
the net boy. Well, that's all for now. If you enjoyed it, press like. Subscribe if you want to see some more. Ring the bell to be notified when we upload something new.